Welcome to tonight's live blending event brought to you by Flaviar and Whistle Pig. I'm Dan Dunn, and I'll be your cruise director, or should I say booze director? No, I shouldn't say that. Sorry, you know, Tom Cruise and Castaway had the volleyball Wilson. I've got this thing growing on my head. It's my new friend. It's getting bigger every day. Anyway, uh, we got some cool and knowledgeable folks joining us tonight for this live stream, including YouTube stars Chad and Sarah Perkins of It's Bourbon Night, because it is Bourbon Night, and Daniel Whittington and Rex Williams of Whiskey Tribe, which is a great tribe. You, if you can join that tribe, get in it. It's the best. Um, we would be absolutely thrilled to hear from you tonight, so I invite you to fire off questions and comments via the comments box, which is down under the live stream here, and we'll try to get to as many of those as we can throughout the broadcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna jump right in because we got some stuff going here. Our first guest is the master blender at Whistlepig. For those of you unfamiliar what a master blender does, basically they take different spirits and they mix or blend them together and they do so masterfully. A little insider knowledge for you. And with that, I want to uh, bring on our first guest. He is the master blender at Whistle Pig, and he is Peter Lynch. Peter, how are you, man? Fantastic, Dan. Thank you so much. And I just want to go ahead and say your hair looks fantastic. Change oh, nothing. It's, it speaks to me. This dude. It really. speaks to me. And by no the way, loss. I can't go on without giving you big ups on that. What is that a Christmas sweater you've got there? <laughs> this would be the limited edition 2018 Whistle Pig Ugly Christmas sweater. If you want some, uh, look on eBay. There might be a couple on there for maybe 50 grand, 60 grand, something like that. It's very coveted. I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Uh, so, guys, thanks. thanks so much for joining us tonight. It's gonna be a great night of blending. What we're doing here tonight is we're making the next Whistle Pig Whiskey as a team, as a group. We are quite literally crowdsourcing this out, and I couldn't be happier because that makes my job a little bit easier. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that a big part of this is giving back to the people that have gotten us to where we are. USBG, the United States Bartenders Guild, 20% of all online sales through Flaviar will be donated to that relief fund during these troubling times, so we're very excited to be giving back. So if you're here with us tonight, hopefully you've received one of these beautiful kits. If not, take a gander. We've got our graduated cylinders with our pipettes, our whistle pig tasting glass, and our three whiskeys, our wheat, our barley, and our rye. And now we've had about the past week or two of submissions coming in from Flaviar members telling us their preferred version of the blend. Now, myself and the team at Whistlepig took all these numbers and quite literally said, what is the most popular blend areas? Where are the numbers hitting most frequently? What do people prefer the most? We took those sort of 10, 15 blends, if you will, narrowed them down a bit and found the three perfect blends that hit what you guys are looking for. Tonight, we're going to blend through those. We're going to taste through those. We're going to talk about them. I want to hear as much as I can from you guys, too. And ultimately, together, we're going to decide what the final version of Homestock is. So without further ado, let's get to blending, people. Blend number one is a rye-heavy blend. We're going to start off by blending the rye component. And I should mention the breakdown of the blend. You should have it, but we're looking at 75% rye. 15% wheat and 5% barley. So we're just gonna blend up these whiskeys real quick. This is the most exciting part where we all just silently kind of measure stuff out and you know, everybody looks a little bit awkward on camera, but. So people, how do I determine 75%? Exactly, Dan, I'm glad you asked. So on these pipette droppers, you're gonna see millimeter markings going up to three millimeters. You're gonna, basically want to make out a 10 milliliter blend, treating each single milliliter as 10%. So if I'm trying to do 75% rye, I'm gonna add in 7.5 milliliters of the rye. 
it's a little bit difficult to be precise. Try your best. Don't hurt yourself if you have a you know tenth of a mil extra in there, but get to blending. Again, in the instructional video, we went over this, but I definitely would recommend measuring out your components separately because it's really easy to put a little bit too much of one component in and throw your blend off. So here we go. I'm messing this up already, just letting you know. Well, that's, that's part of the process. Now, one thing I would highly recommend if you've got multiple glasses, like most of us probably do, is labeling those glasses because I cannot tell you how many probably gallons of whiskey I've had to destroy because I just can't remember what was in the glass actually. So I will be writing one, two, and three on my actual glasses with a marker. You have a post-it note or something like that to keep track. That'll be a great way to make sure you don't get confused. Do you do this in your spare time when you're not uh, doing it for work? You just find yourself singing at home? Measuring uh, out. Yeah, and I don't remember the last time I had a normal dream, if you will, where basically it's all just numbers and whiskeys and barrels and blends all forming in the head, all that good stuff. You wake up the night. It was 78%. <laughs> and I blow it. The worst part about being a blender is you have a session, you know, you go through about, let's say, 10, 15, 50 different whiskeys. And real quick, I'm measuring out 15% of my wheat, so 1.5 milliliters here. But uh, yeah, the worst part is when, you know, you've made all these blends, you dump out the remnants, and then guess what? The things you dumped out in that dump bucket is the best version of the blend, and you have no idea what it was. Never could know what it was, but I've had some fantastic whiskeys. In fact, people like to ask me what my favorite whiskeys are, and I oftentimes say it's a whiskey I made by accident, or it's a whiskey I pulled from a random barrel, on a random day that two weeks later maybe tasted quite a bit different, but on that day hit the sweet spot. So last but not least, one milliliter of that barley component is gonna get us to our 100% blend of 75% rye, 15% wheat, and 10% barley. Last thing you wanna do is just give that glass a good swirl. We're looking at a smaller amount of whiskey, so you wanna coat that glass, get those aromatics going. Mm. Oh, yeah. What do you do with the whiskey that you've spilled all over your feet? Because I've been doing that. Well, lucky for us, it evaporates pretty quickly. So uh, you just kind of let it sit there. And then you get a bonus foot cologne, too. So, yeah. Disinfected. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm the one guy who's had no need for hand sanitizer in the price. Which is all the cast strength whiskey I've got lying around. <laughs> so I just want to pour this in here now, right? Yeah, exactly. So you're going to want to measure those components that you pulled out of your sample bottle into your glass after you've sort of pulled them out precisely. And we'll give everybody as much time as you need to make this whiskey. I know I have a lot of thoughts about this right off the bat, but I want to hear from you guys. So Pete, while we're waiting for people who are slow, come on. Oh, uh, come on. We're waiting for those people. What, uh, how long have you been at Whistlepig? So I've been there for just about five years now. I started when the distillery was constructed back in 2015. I actually was one of the first distillers at Whistlepig. So kind of made my way up the ranks, sort of formed this blending department. And it's not a singular sort of person. You know, I'm the guy who's here right now, but I need to give shouts out to my team, Megan Ireland, Emily Harrison on the farm, our sales team, our maintenance, everybody out there. Those are the people that really get the whiskey into the bottle, into the glass. I mean. We're crowdsourcing right now with Flaviar, with the world, but I'm constantly crowdsourcing with the office, with our sales team, sending samples out, getting their take, building a better opinion of that whiskey. I've got a pretty good palate, but, you know, other people do too. It's all about getting that rounded idea, and that's what we're looking at right here tonight. And by the way, I don't, I don't mention Whistlepig unless we have a shout out and maybe even a little toast here to the late, great Dave Pickerel. Uh, Thank Dave, you, sir. For those of you who don't know, Dave is was a it's still hard to say that was a legend in the business and he's the guy that made whistle pig happen in the beginning this was his baby he loved it and uh dave passed away way too young and uh to dave i'm gonna actually ra raise this glass that i got here the farm stock rye so with that i'm gonna pour some out for the dead homies thank you dave we wouldn't be here without you and thank you for the mention dan <laughs> So by the way, anybody at home that's moving slowly, you should just go.
just get out of here. You've got bigger <laughs> challenges in life if you haven't mixed this by now. No, I think we're ready. Right. I think I'm ready to talk about this whiskey because I'm getting a lot of great notes, especially off the nose that are really speaking to me. I mean, that base rye component, you might expect a bunch of spice character, big pepper in your face. Rye doesn't have to be just peppery spice, though. We're looking at baking spices. We're looking at a nice floral character. We're looking at these herbal tones as well. When you mix that in with something like Vermont oak, which is going to give us a lot of these nice vanilla caramel extracts, you get a softer, sweeter, more baking spice forward rye. For me, that's forming the base of this blend here. And it's really giving it this rounded sort of accepting feel, if you will, on the nose. By the way, Peter... When you're tasting it and you're nosing a whiskey at home, I, I'm, I'm guessing you're using, you know, you don't want to ram, not you, you know this, but you don't want to ram your nose into the glass. You want to kind of keep it here, you want to agitate a little bit. You want to keep your mouth open. You're almost breathing the whole thing in, okay? Because if you stick it in there like this, you're going to blow your nose out. Uh, Couldn't have said it better myself. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of wine drinkers are used to kind of just sticking the schnoz right in there. I'd say if it's giving you any sort of painful sensation, take a step back appreciate the aroma. If all you can say is it's sweet, that's fine. You know, you don't have to say, oh, it's like that licorice I tasted when I was five years old. Descriptors are different for everybody. Just do you like the whiskey? Why is going to be different for everybody? The reasons why I like this whiskey, that sweetness on the nose. On the palate too, I've only had a little bit of a first sip, but I'm getting this really nice sort of smooth viscosity, bit of those herbal notes I was talking about, some of those baking spices as well. And it's a bit of a clean finish, too. It's a little bit lighter on my end. Do you also feel it's a good idea to prime the palate a little bit first when you're when – you're I always like to take a tiny little bit, get it in my mouth, and then I go in for the, the next sip, which is where I'm really going to get everything that's going on there. Exactly. And, Dan, you're an expert because that's exactly what you should do. You really want to acclimatize that palate. I like to tell people for your first sip, you should take the smallest sip you've ever taken in your life. Just get an idea – then you move in, go a little bit deeper. And that's going to be even more important when we're looking at smaller volumes, 10 mil blends here, that we're conserving this whiskey a bit more. But yeah, you want to appreciate that aroma without killing yourself. Take smaller sips so that you can preserve your palate and the whiskey itself. And guys, let's not forget too, we want to save some of these blends so we can taste them against each other as we go on. So make sure you don't drink quite all of this. I'm tempted to slam it down myself because it's quite that delicious, but uh, resist the temptation if you could. I'm seeing some some happy faces coming from the whiskey tribe here. What are you guys uh, picking up here on blend number one? Good flavors. Good flavors. <laughs> right, we're done. Boom. We were just Oops. commenting. We're, <laughs> last real good. Yeah, we were just commenting how how um, so far this is very similar to what we already know and love about Whistlepick. Um, and yeah, yeah there, there's been some special editions that we've done, and it's very in line with that like Christmassy, spicy kind of beautiful holiday whiskey almost yeah 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 yeah. and by Good the way stuff. we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves here i haven't introduced you yet so let's oh, go Lord. oh no and rex williams guys uh <laughs> say hi to everybody out there first. hey 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 cheers uh thank you for inviting us this mm -hmm. is fun yeah uh, we uh we, we were given the opportunity to join you guys and it's very exciting to see whistle pig get in with us on the crowdsource game it's really fun whenever you can work with whiskey lovers to design these whiskeys so yeah we're uh We've been, you know, sending these out to the community. They've been really into developing their own blends. So I'm, I'm very fresh, by the way. Daniel and Emma, our blender, have not let me partake yeah. of what they've created. So I am coming at this fresh for the first time. So I'm, I'm eager to get into it. I'm going to say, Pete, I think your, sweat, your sweater influenced your blend choices. <laughs> you get some way. Christmassy? All yeah. Right. <laughs> you just, it's holiday focused. I want to remind you out there again, if you want to come in with questions and comments, it's in the right below the live stream. We're already getting a bunch in here right now. Um, Travis, Pe Travis Peterson on YouTube says he's getting sour apple and pepper on the nose. Nice. That's completely wrong. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just Come kidding. on, Dan. Come yeah, on. I'm kidding. You nailed it. Uh, yeah. Dave, Dave and Mahoney on YouTube says, Whistle Pig Rye just lends itself to a nice blend so well, so smooth. How's that? Yeah. I mean, the tribe guys hit the nail on the head, and I'll be honest, we looked at ourselves, Dan, myself, that, that we didn't quite have enough beer gravitas, you know, on stream, so we decided we needed to get a little bit more in place. But yeah, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. This is very much a whistle pig blend for me. It's very reminiscent of Farmstock, and I'd say that this blend out of the three 
is almost the most whistle pig centric. Now, that's not necessarily the purpose of this experiment, though. You know, we might find that we prefer something that's a little bit different. However, that familiarity, I definitely taste it as well. The baking spices, that nice sort of ride forward. Ne not necessarily punchy, because we do punch with the 10 year, with the 15, with Bossan, but we're also soft and sweet with farm stock, with 12. So I couldn't agree more with you guys on that front. And I appreciate that input too. So uh, we're also getting the weekend mixology thrown in, said I'm getting some brown sugar, maple syrup notes like citrus, a little lemon, all those things. Yeah, Great. definitely getting citrus. So I think uh, now are we gonna go? Uh, are we gonna go whiskey tribe next on who's doing the the, the blender since you guys are already on. Oh, let's do it! Yeah, hell yeah! Yeah. Wait, 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 wait! What? Oh, you guys are in charge now. Yeah. So you guys. Are we supposed to come up with our own here? <laughs> <laughs> the greatest blend the world has ever seen. Oh no! This no. is a terrible idea. Daniel, you have a full ten seconds to figure that out. I know. No, now, I, real quick, I have a plan. I need. I need just a private moment with Dan. Dan, you and me, no one else, just you and me. You ready? Yes. You behave yourself. You behave yourself. And I will show you what amazing hair really looks like <laughs> before the end of the stream. Wait, I could right. just, that's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. I am going to be on my best behavior from here on out. Here we go. That is absolutely a threat. <laughs> so, uh, so, guys, what do we got? What, what's going to be the proportions on your blend here? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, Em and I worked on this blend for three days, but we're both dominantly scotch drinkers. And so no matter what we did, we kept coming back to this being a barley dominant blend. So uh, I think the one that we ended up submitting was uh, that we're like, this is the one, 50% barley, 35% rye, 15% wheat. Okay. okay. So again, if you're doing it at home, it's so milliliter, one milliliter is a percentage, so or right. it's a percent. So you want to do one, two, three, five milliliters. Five, there you go. Of yeah, five milliliters, 3.5 of rye and 1.5 of wheat. Can you make me one of those? I'm making you one right now. You Ca do it faster. Just calm you're, you're yourself slow. down. slow. Jesus. You, you're bad and you By the way, these bottles bad. are amazing. The mini whistle pig bottles, oh, yeah. the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Guys, where are you based? You're in Texas, right? Yep, Austin, mm -hmm. Texas. How's everything going down there? Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's going as well as it's going anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah that's we'll, true. We'll say we're you know more fortunate than most for sure. But uh, yeah, just ready for various situations to come to a natural conclusion. Sure. I'll leave it there. Let's let's hope it happens soon. So wait, yeah. you said fifty of the barley. What do we got on the wheat? Uh, wheat is uh, fifteen percent, so one point five milliliters. And then rye, 3.5 milliliters, or 35%. And then, by the way, as we're putting these percentages to get, uh, together, kudos to you guys for helping out the bartenders, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I just heard about this for the first time whenever we started up, and that is uh, amazing and generous, and we very much, we have bartenders that work for us. Uh, it is very much a need. So good on you for stepping up. Hey, we appreciate that. I mean, again, it's... We, we were not the people who were selling Whistle Pig in the early days, and even now, it's the bartender. It's the guy who's recommending it to, hey, oh, you like this? You're going for this? Why not try this? You know, it's really the only thing we can do in a time like this. So for us, it's a no-brainer, but I, I appreciate that, man. All right, you have my blend ready? That's yours right there. This is the one you did? Yeah. Okay, all right. You got to pay attention. Well, okay. this, this is a sharp group of people. Have you you got to keep up. Have you met Rex me, Dan? Can I, can you bring your A-game. Okay. Okay. I've got it recreated. And by the way, this one changed dramatically after sitting for 24 hours. So uh, by like 30%. So the fresh blend, while it's close to what I really loved about it, doesn't quite accomplish it until it settles. Now, guys, I'm going to jump in here real quick. I think we had a bit of a miscommunication. We're still definitely going to taste this blend, but we did have actually three preset blends that were sent out to everybody that we are making here. I actually love yes. this. I'm going off script, though, and tasting your guys' blend. I want to talk about it. Are you telling me we can yeah. taste more blends? I didn't see the preset blend. So what was the other preset blend? So the next blend we're working on, we'll get to that just after this, because, again, I want to taste through your blend and talk about where you guys are coming from. But our next blend is going to be a slight variation, a little bit 
further away from where you guys are looking at, but talk to me about your whiskey real quick, and, and then we'll move on to blend number two. Yeah. That was the whiskey tribe went rogue. They went rogue. The whiskey, whiskey tribe went rogue. That's a there. Uh, went, there. Never, that's never happened. Texas, man. Texas. You know what I think this means? Now you have to show us your hair. So. Oh, well. They, we'll we got one up. There, yeah. We'll get that. You have to earn <laughs> the hair. It's worth whiskey, it. Whiskey tribe did go rogue. <laughs> The Whiskey Tribe went rogue. Honestly, I love your blend. Fantastic. For me, it's getting some sort of brighter, fresher notes. Not yes. necessarily super fruity per se, but some crisper sort of flavors as well. Unfortunately, and let's talk about this after. Let's do a second stream, just us, you know, and we'll talk about this. Let's move on to blend number two, though, which Bring is, here we go. Here are the numbers for blend number two. We're looking at 60% rye, 35% wheat, and 5% barley. And I'll repeat those. Again, we just we're trying to stay true to the people who have submitted things. Whiskey Tribe, yeah, yeah. if I had my way, you know, you guys would uh, actually I'd probably change our mascot to just your beards. But uh, I'll into my <laughs> so again, sixty percent rye is going to be the base of this whiskey right here. So we're going to add in six mils with this dropper. And this blend might, off the bat, seem kind of similar to the last blend, you know. 60% rye versus 75%. The wheat content is significantly increased from 15 to 35%, but the barley is only changed from 10% to five. Doesn't seem that different. We are going to learn that one plus one doesn't equal two here. We're going to find how these flavors work together with these slight additions and decreases of certain components. And it might surprise you. You said In fact, it will. 60 rye, right? 60% rye, exactly. So six mils of the rye. For the wheat, it is 35%, so three and a half milliliters. And again, good blender. Mark the glass. Remember what you're doing. Okay. Oh, anybody streaming any series they like? Anything while we're doing this? Let us know, guys. <laughs> How about the new, uh, the improv sort of, it's uh, Middle Ditch and Schwartz. That's good not stuff. Too shabby. Yeah, if you're into improv, it's not too shabby at all, so. All right. Because you can, by the way, when blending whiskey, it's always a good idea to have a, you know, either some music going or a TV show streaming in the background so that you don't seem like a, a nut. You know? I would say so. And well, actually, I have some so, blood on the black bear. You know. Yeah, I, I would have some music blaring right now. In fact, some terrible heavy metal, but the Flaviar guys had some issues with the background noise, so unfortunately I had to say no. But anyways, it's a classic way to blend. You got to have the music going. You got to have the speakers loud. Stay in the zone. Don't let anybody distract you. Uh, we got some people, several people chiming in saying, when is Rex going to take the hat off? Huh. <laughs> You're going to have to stick with us. That's the big reveal. It is. It really is. Yeah, they thought that the reveal was Homestock's final blend, but it's not. It's the hair. No. Look, I don't understand why hair became the primary topic of conversation. That's just bullshit. <laughs> because it's the most important thing in the world. This is not, it's, it's just not right. It's just not right. <laughs> All right. So what are we getting here? So okay. for me, the, yeah, actually, tell me, guys. Hit me. This one, so I'm A-B-ing it to that one because they're now side by side. Good man which makes it a little bit better. And it's got this darker, almost tobacco musty note, which wasn't in the first Christmas one, which is super interesting. You're getting, it's, it's a tobacco for you. I'm not, I think maybe like a dark fruit for me, but I get what you're saying. Oh, well, it, is well. it is always surprising how slight variations in uh, what you're putting together in a glass, it's, it's recognizable. And the numbers are so small, you think that couldn't possibly be picked up. I think it's impressive that you can be so wrong with such confidence. Yeah. <laughs> wait, just wait, just wait for the reveal. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the source of my confidence. But what are, uh, I haven't gotten here, uh, well, I guess Chad and Sarah are going to get to talk about the second one, but but uh, those dark notes, yes. are, this, this is interesting territory to me because it, it brought out some of the mustier notes that remind me, it doesn't smell like this, but it reminds me of the funky mustiness of a sherried scotch. There you go. Right? But, it's, but it's not sherry cask. It's just know. that, you know what I mean? Okay. And here's, think of a little bit sort of out of bounds where we're dealing with a dechar rechar cask here on the barley right. and the wheat. 
Just real quick, a dechar rechar cask is a cask that's been scraped on the inside, had the char removed, and then refired, just sort of rejuvenated. You're going to get a totally different profile than you would out of new oak. You'll get some of those we might call rancio characters, these sort of deeper maturation characters. Granted, maybe not so much so at five, six years old, maybe more at ten, but you're definitely picking up on that. I mean, what the, was that? the right. <laughs> Rancio. Uh, Rancio. Yeah, it's, a, it's more of a cognac sort of Armagnac term, but it's this sort of, you know, that musty, mushroomy, earthy, if you will. Yep. It's okay. maturity. It's, you, you smell a whiskey and you know it's got some good age to it. You know it's been aged well, or any spirit, really, to that matter. Yeah. You know what's Rancid. missing? Rancid. You know what's... That's a different thing. It's the wrong thing. That's, yeah, the wrong that's thing. a totally different thing. <laughs> Can I say something? There's a lot of testosterone going on here, and for God's sakes, we need to get we need to change that right now. Uh, <laughs> if only so Chad, if we're, we're throwing it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to bring in some other guests with us. Uh, so it, it, they they have the very popular YouTube channel. It's Bourbon Night. Chad and Sarah Perkins, guys, come on in. You took my joke. Well, hello. You took my joke. I was going to really? say, so that's why I'm here. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it. I was going to do a little self-defacing humor, but what are you going to do? How are you? How are you doing? And where, where are you coming to us from tonight? Uh, from Lexington, Kentucky. I was going to say the kitchen table. Can you tell us a little bit about it's, it's bourbon night? Sure. Every night it is, it's bourbon night. Well, yeah, <laughs> sure. No, uh, we've been doing the show for, oh gosh, about four years about now. Four years, yeah. Yeah, um, doing blind flights. Uh, we've been dabbling and blending a little bit, but not not to this level. This, yeah, is, this a, is a very new and exciting level for us. I've discovered I'm a slow blender. I <laughs> <laughs> No, it's been great, though. This has been so much fun. Yeah. Um, I like this one a lot, actually. I'm strangely getting, like, I'm getting the notes that you were talking about, but I'm also really weirdly getting Luxardo cherry in there, too. Yeah. Specifically. I get, um, like, the stuff the cherries sit in in Luxardo cherries. The juice. The juice. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's kind of, like, speaking to that darker fruit that I think Rex was talking about. Um, but I got this weird, like, yeah, young right. apple on the finish. Like, when I let it just sit around. What is a young apple? It's child? not an old apple. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a green apple? I don't see colors. I don't see colors. Okay. I don't see colors. It's a young apple. It's an apple. It's an apple. Ever had an apple? Yes. There you go. There we go. Okay. Well, uh, Chad, Sarah, you you share something in common. Jeeker, Jeeker, seven eight seven three said, less spice on this one. I like this one a little bit better than the first one. Mm. Yeah, I think you know when I'm nosing them. I when I go back to A, it definitely has more sweeter, like caramelized sugars on the nose. Um, versus, I think there is a, dar a deeper, darker char note on the nose in B. Um, but when I taste them, I think that I'm, I think that I'm leaning towards B. I don't know. Oh, I like we, them both. <laughs> we should also say that we have named these A, B, uh, the whiskey tribe. We called D because they kind of just. <laughs> I know. I'm like stuck. There. <laughs> do I also get to throw one in? No. We're gonna be, yeah. Yes. Do that's how it works. My own too. Hey, uh, for Peter, this is got how we question. win the contest. <laughs> we got a question from Mitch Maglio. Um, hey, Mitch. From coming in from Bourbon Night, uh, saying on it's Bourbon Night, saying why did you settle at 86 proof? So 86 proof. I wouldn't look at it as a settle so much as a almost precedent where we're following in the line of farm stock here. Farm stock has been an 86 proof product. And additionally, it's that it's at that proof point for a reason at that age. Lower, you're going to have absolutely no mouthfeel. Higher, you're going to get too much of that spice. And particularly with the barley at a higher proof than 90, it was just overwhelming. Heat on the back end really kind of ruined the finish. The 86 proof is almost twofold. It was already in place with the farm stock where we're following along these lines, this blending sort of crowdsourcing ideology, and also trying to find that perfect proof point. So really mitigating out the negative effects that are going to come with whiskey that's five, six years old. Uh, Isaac Wilson on YouTube is saying he's getting tobacco and cinnamon. There you go. Cinnamon in there. I mean, I've been waiting for that tobacco note, and I heard that from Tribe. A little bit of a mixture of the, it's almost a sweeter tobacco, right? It's that ripe berries and that tobacco with a little bit of dried leather almost. I'm getting myself a little bit more spice, but on the side back palate than I was on the first whiskey. A bit more of a peppery spice, though. For me, it's also got a little bit more of a present finish, but it's a little bit harsher, if you will, just to be simple. It doesn't finish quite as smooth, but 
some people like a bite. You know, you don't necessarily want to have a whiskey that just goes down like nothing. So for me, I mean, markedly different than blend one. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me just ask the tribe. Do you guys have any other blends you want to introduce before we get to the third one? <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to get away. I don't want to get away. If you guys <laughs> oh, that was great. That was well Sarah, played. Sarah. One? Anybody? Anybody else want to throw something in? Yeah. yeah. Sarah, go Sarah. Sarah does. I've come up with a cocktail. Let's make it right now. <laughs> that we will bottle a cocktail today. Um, no, uh, we were playing around and we got uh, we did forty percent rye, forty percent wheat, and twenty percent barley. And we did a bunch of different tests, and that was the one we've tried. That was, for, that was your say, own. Plan. Say those numbers again. Forty percent rye, forty percent wheat, twenty percent barley. In okay. tribe, that was just for their personal favorite blend. Just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that yeah. Was a I mean, before we move on to the third blend, let me just go around and ask you guys: What are your what's your favorite cocktail to make with Whistle Pig Rye? Let's go with you, Peter. If you, you got one cocktail you're going to make, you oh, think God. really sort of underscores what Whistle Pig's about. What is it? I mean, I could answer the question you just asked, but I think I have a better answer, which is just what's my favorite Whistle Pig cocktail personally. Yeah, everyone's gonna hate me. It's the exact opposite of what you think. And there's one person out there who's gonna punch me in the face for revealing this secret. My favorite whistle pig cocktail is equal parts farm stock crop one and cream soda. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, that sounds amazing. Fantastic. That sounds really good. Fantastic. Yep. Maybe not the yeah, answer you were looking for, but okay. What? <laughs> Sarah, that's Dude, that one dude's close. Soda. Jacked up on Mountain Dew. Um, so we do an old fashioned with a homemade simple syrup that's infused with an orange black tea. And I think the herbal note and that simple syrup from the tea really plays well with the rye. Um, so it's two ounces of the rye. It's just giving you the rest. A half ounce or just slightly less of the simple syrup, which is obviously just equal parts sugar, water. And then you steep two tea bags. Um, and then uh, we use tiki bitters in that. So like 10 drops of tiki bitters. Yeah. Give it a stir. That, oh. That's our cocktail. If you'd that's like to watch an episode about it, it's on yeah. our it's on our channel. It's on our YouTube channel. My favorite, hey. cocktail, my yeah. favorite cocktail is going over to their house and having them make me that cocktail. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Pat, do you have one, you guys? Daniel Rex, what are you gonna what are you gonna do with whistle pig? So honestly, man, I, I live in the world of neat pours. It has been far too long since I had a nice cocktail. Like I'm having to do the reviews and the whole thing. So cocktail sounds nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing down some recommendations right now. <laughs> I've got one for you. It's right. equal parts farm stock crop one and cream soda. Yeah. All right. Game okay. on. Yeah. Game on. That's, uh, that's really We'll good. have it with a side of Funyuns. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Blast so let's, it up. Let's go to our third blend, and Chad and Sarah are going to handle the heavy lifting on this one. But are you going to do it, Peter? Or somebody. Well, I'll intro the blend, I'll chat through it, but I think Chad and Sarah, if you haven't seen this number already, which who knows, you might not have, you're going to be pretty happy with this third blend because it's pretty damn near your guys' blend. This third blend is definitely the most different from any of the other two blends. We are looking at 45% rye, 30% wheat, and 25% barley. And again, I'll go over that again. We're seeing a more even distribution here, of all the inputs. And I, again, I loved all the comments you guys sent with your submissions to the Flaviar members. Thank you so much. It's things like that that help us build out the perfect, the best version of the whiskey possible. And it's this of the barley being too high gives us a little bit too much of a funk or too much heat that really help us sort of finagle these great blends. This blend for me, almost equal parts, not quite. I think we're gonna see something really different here. Maybe a little bit of polarizing. So 45% rye, 4.5 milliliters of your rye. Okay. It's going to be 30% wheat, 3 milliliters of the wheat. And last but not least, after you've added in 3 mils of wheat, 25% barley, so 2.5 mils of the barley. How much of your working time is spent doing this? That is a great question. And that's going to depend on the day, the week, the month. 
for instance, it's boss sock season. I'm all over the place with trials. I'm tasting left and right. You know, it might be the same set of five samples, but I'm going to taste it as much as I can, as often as I can, as many times as I can to get the best view possible. However, you know, a lot of my job is making sure the whiskey's consistent, that our supply chain's there in terms of volume, that spreadsheet work. You know, my job's a lot more boring than people think. It's actually one of my most, most favorite parts, but you know, it's just kind of making sure, all right, what's going on with the distillery? Are we distilling something a little bit more innovative this week? What's going on the blending side? Are we adding in, and again, 25% barley, 2.5 mils, just in case we forgot, but just making sure that kind of the new product development fronts are covered. Honestly, I've been doing a lot of things like this, virtual tastings lately, Zoom trainings, if you will, spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with distributors across the country that I would never meet. So, you know, some silver linings here with the uh, Corona situation in that sense, I'd say, but uh, every day is a little different, that cliche answer. By the way, Howard H. Howard H. on YouTube is asking, how come you're not cleaning the piper before each mix? Because I'm freaking lazy, Howard. I'm lazy. Great question. And I mean, in a perfect yeah. setting, in a perfect setting, we'd be doing all that and more. We actually wouldn't even be blending by volume. We'd be blending by weight and proof because temperature is going to change your volume slightly. The reason I'm not cleaning it out is because, honestly, the addition of the water that's remaining in my pipette is going to probably potentially do just as much, if not more, to influence that whiskey, i.e. proofing it down. So let's say I thought I pulled up, you know, two mils of rye, but in reality, I've still got some water in there. I just proofed it down to 70 proof. I'm not adding in what I thought I did. You're quite right, though, in a perfect world, we'd be much more controlled, but it's coronavirus. We're doing what we can with what we got. And I think, you know, we're able to come up with something that, at least in my mind, is goddamn delicious in spite of that. So with that in mind, what are you guys getting on number three night? I mean, pretty close to your original blend, but probably a little bit different as well. Yeah, for me, yeah, it's coming across yeah. as a little bit more cohesive yeah. and rounder. Yeah, it's amazing what a 5% shift, you know, this way or that way does for a blend. Right. Like, yeah, it's reminiscent of the one that, that became our favorite, but it's also, you know, you can tell it's a completely different animal. And what's better? What's worse? You know, what's jumping out at you? Ours is better. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that this has... I think that the rye and the wheat play really well together here. Um, that those like more mild um, and those tobacco notes that were in the wheat. Uh, what else did I write down? Um, oh, I thought I had a little bit of like a toffee um, oh. flavor to it is playing really well with those spices. I think it's becoming really balanced. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I, th I like the mouthfeel a lot. Um, it's probably not quite for me as viscous as A, but I think overall, again, that balance is like really doing it for me. I'll tell you one thing I liked about when we were, when we first tried these just separately by themselves, the barley brought this nuttiness. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you watch, oh, yeah. if you watch Bourbon Night, you know, I like, well, we both like nutty bourbons. So when we were first pitching out blends, I was like, oh, let's go heavier on that barley. I want to get that nuttiness in there, but it never worked out. But Having 25% of the barley in this, mm -hmm. I, I am getting more of that, but it's yeah. not it's not like squelching the rye or what the wheat's bringing to the table. Sure, you're still getting oh, those nice. like floral herbal notes that I think the barley was bringing, but it's not super overpowering. Yeah. We're getting, all, a bunch, really together. we're getting a bunch of people coming in too on online. Bob Garrow on Facebook, herbal mint orange peel. Mm. Uh, Eric Smith on it, it, it said more heat, a little more heat on this one, on the final one. Um, Aaron Huberman on Facebook said, super sweet start and the spice ramps up nicely as you go on, which I agree with that one. Uh, Matt Robbins, much more complete blend, good fruit, spice, and tobacco. And then in all caps, emphasizing balanced, balanced. balanced. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, while we're, while we're talking about this, I want to, uh, encourage everybody at home there's going to be a voting link on the screen coming up, and you're going to have five minutes to vote on the the, the blend that you like best. And at the end, uh, we're going to announce the winning blend, and we're going to have a parade virtually down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to throw a party at my new bar I just had built. You guys like it? It's pretty awesome, right? 
It is awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Dan, you did it. You earned, you earned the hair reveal, Dan. It's coming. Oh, it's, it's happening. Coming. It's finally it's happening, people. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. At this point, you can only lose it because you've locked it in. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. You've locked it in. Just maintain. <laughs> Just let me know when the reveal is happening so I can maximize your screen and really drink it in myself. You know? and, and hit record on the screen share. Yeah. <laughs> Another, Peter, I, do, I have a very important question for you during this. We're all wondering how we're all doing and how everybody's doing it. How are the pigs on the farm doing? Fantastic. Mortimer Jr., his diet has not been affected, we'll say, by coronavirus. Uh, one positive thing about growing grain on our own farm is that the animals are never wanting for food. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was nice. The, you know, fermented mash that's been distilled, they love to eat, you know, a little bit of residual alcohol in there as well. Gets them a little bit buzzed. There's a reason why cows love distillery waste, and it's because it gets them a little bit drunk. Gotcha. <laughs> Oh yeah, but they're yeah, fantastic. We get I like when we get haters on here. Now we got a little hater going. Oh yeah, please. Kevin he, Kevin he on Facebook says the barley just didn't play well with the others in my blends when it was above 10%. Anybody agree? No. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, because well, I kind of thought that when we were first experimenting with this on Sunday, our first blend, I think we did, I wrote it down. We did 60% rye, 20% barley, and 20% wheat. And I, I got like a lot of floral and herbal on that. And so from there, I was like, oh man, I guess we have to dial down the barley. But I think it, it, it is such a fine balance between that ratio. It yeah. is that ratio. Cause like you can take something up 5% and something else down 5%, and it totally changes it. And I think that's what's crazy about what we've tried tonight is that it's absolutely. Just we dial things, you know, you're just tinkering a little bit, but it really changes it. Yep. So we found something when we were blending with peated whiskey for the distillery that uh, peat reacts very weirdly to blends in that you can get something and think, I need just a little less peat and add in something else to temper it and the peat explodes for some reason. Hmm. And I found that to be the case with the barley in this lineup, that it didn't react proportionally in the way that you expected. And so if you needed like, I think the barley is providing X, it needs just a little more and it'll be there. You add a little more and then something else would skyrocket unexpectedly. And it was very weird, but I think uh, I think the barley, it was it really was down to half percents and percentages that it made dramatic differences. The, uh, by the way, I just made yours, Chad and Sarah, the 20, 40, 40. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What did you do? Come on. <laughs> we got, uh, we got uh, uh, who is it? Denny Lawrence said, is it, uh, asks, is it odd that I'm getting some nutmeg on the nose? Yes, that's incredibly <laughs> odd. On which one? That's never happened. <laughs> I would say it's not odd at all. That's a classic rye. And also in some of these sort of wheat and barley whiskeys from the barrel, it's a classic baking spice flavor right there. There's nutmeg, cinnamon, sort of cardamom notes there. I just got to say, too, I love all the notes about blending all the input. This is the first time where we've offered whiskeys that aren't rye. Farm stock has been this project that's kind of built up over the years in really just means anything coming from the farm. And in the past, Farm Stocks 1 through 3, it's been rye-focused. Year 1, we had our 1-year-old rye at 20% of the blend. Blended with other ryes, older ryes from various distilleries, but still rye. Year 2, same deal, but we increased the percentage with 2-year-old rye whiskey. Last year's Farm Stock, which, Dave, you're enjoying right now, great stuff, we got up to 52% rye in the blend. But again, still just rye whiskeys here. This is the first time you've ever seen, A, any non-rye whiskey coming from Whistlepig, but also this kind of farm stock ethos, if you will, bringing the farm to you, bringing our farm components out there and really getting, I mean, really the best version for us because crowd blending is not anything new to us. Farm stock two, three were actually created through crowd blending events where I was fortunate enough to travel around the country and sit with people like you in person, do these things and get your take and you know, this is nothing new for us in a great way where we're building off this sort of idea of what can come from and will come from the farm in years to come. And you better believe you might see something like this down the line. Not the same, but perhaps similar. So, wait, 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 wait. I asked how, how the pigs were doing, which prompted Danielle Bennett to write in uh, and a lot of other people. Whiskey and bacon 
or a perfect pair. <laughs> Hide the pigs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, pigs. Uh, They're coming. That's brutal. But it is it is true. I gotta say, I do like a little bacon and the whiskey. Mm. That's beef. Speaking of bacon and whiskey, Dan, that maple syrup, that whistle pig maple syrup. Next time you're making some bacon, just drizzle a little bit on there as it's right. cooking. Uh, <laughs> whistle pig makes some maple syrup, and man, I, I've stayed away from pancakes for a while. I live in Los Angeles; they don't let you. You know, when you fly into LA, they weigh you at the airport. <laughs> so I don't eat pancakes a lot, but I got some whistle pig syrup and. Started having pancakes again, and man, it is so good. And you're making that on the farm? Yeah, exactly. So that is coming from our maple trees on the farm, basically getting tapped. Sap runs out, gets sugared on the farm, boiled down into this maple syrup. But then the extra special part is it goes into our X-Ry whiskey barrels for at least six months. Pulls on some of that wood flavor, some of that whiskey flavor. I've actually had some bottles that maybe were a little bit more whiskey than syrup, and I might have called a cocktail rather than maple syrup. But I almost regret bringing it up because, unfortunately, it is not something you can get unless you're, you know, special on the farm, basically, and, you know, tapping the actual tree. Yeah, I mean, well, Dan thinks he's special, so I guess you can give him that. But. I got a good question here from Justin uh, Pies, P-Y-Z. He said, do the, do the three different uh, ingredients, the, the wheat, the rye, and the barley, do they have different viscosities that make, are they all the same viscosity? No, I would there's a different, different mouthfeel for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would say absolutely there's different mouthfeel. It may not be super intensely different, but just to put it simply for me, the rye is going to be a little bit softer on the mouth. The wheat's a little bit more present, maybe some more, not pepper spice per se, but some oak spice in there. The barley, same deal, but with a little bit more heat. It's got a little bit more viscosity. Typically, you're going to expect different levels of mouthfeel from any different whiskey based off, I mean, the type of barrel it's been in even. And we're seeing the spicier profile in the barley and the wheat coming from that deep char rechar, the softer profile coming in on that rye, actually, because it's been cleaned up a little bit more with a brand new char barrel and some vanilla notes coming in, some creamy lactones really smoothing out that sort of mouthfeel component. So really no one answer, but it's a good line of thinking to stay on when tasting different whiskeys against each other. We got a couple of more minutes here to vote. If you're out there, you, let's get your votes in. If you have any more comments or questions? I want to. Uh, I want to quickly talk about what 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 you guys have coming up on your on your uh, YouTube channels. Uh, anything exciting happening? Without mentioning any other brands, uh, what do you guys have coming up on on the different channels? <laughs> Don't talk about brands, Daniel. <laughs> Don't mention any other brands, but tell us what you have coming up. Yeah, bring back the Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> did you have? Yeah. Did you try the cream soda? Did, did Rex Daniel? Did you guys try? A N W, baby. Is it good? Nah. Uh, so we actually recorded an episode today, and we asked the community of magnificent bastards, like, hey. It's kind of hard to get your hands on the fancier things, the, 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 the sips and the snacks and all that. So what is your favorite bottom shelf budget whiskey and easy snack pairing? Gas like station snack. Something you can get from a gas station. So we, we recorded that. There's a giant mess on the floor you can't see. We got a little out of hand with it. But we discovered <laughs> that. Oh, oh life changing. Change your life forever pairing. If you microwave a honey bun <laughs> for about yeah, 20 seconds. Second. Mike, microwave it, 20 seconds, honey bun. And then you get some, uh, what's it called, some pork rinds. No, no, but not just any pork rinds. Right. The the ones, the uh, what is it called? The cracklins? Cracklins. Right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. brand. You can't see the brand, Daniel. You take, you take <laughs> one bite of the cracklin, follow it with a bite of the honey bun. Yeah. Your life will change in ways you've never imagined. And it <laughs> pairs with this amazing whiskey that's called... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, Sarah and Chad, any any food uh, any food items you can tell us about here? Actually, yes. What a great segue! That is such a great segue. It's um, almost like we talked about this before, but, but we did it. Honestly, we did. No, we uh, recently filmed our second ever episode of Eat More Bourbon, and I'm happy to report this time Sarah did not cut herself during filming. Yes, there was a big accident <laughs> the first time. Um, no, but it's a bourbon butterscotch pie. So, <gasps> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that is the, that is the appropriate reaction, right? There. I mean, <laughs> and yeah. Peter, what are you what are you eating during quarantine? Any anything happening back there? 
It's been steak, it's been steak, and it's been a little bit more steak. I actually, quite literally, I wasn't bored per se. I was more just kind of like fiending. I went to the store. I got a couple cuts, different cuts, marinated, hooked it up. Luckily, you know, I got some people I know in the building, and I just gave it out. But it's been just all kinds of grilling, all kinds of, yeah. My marinades have been, uh, never been up higher at the top of their game, I'd say. What would you, is there, is there an expression of whistle pig that you think goes best with it, with it, with a juicy steak? I'd say so, for sure. If I'm looking at a sweeter marinade, I might balance that with like a 15 year, 10 year, something that's going to give me a little bit more oomph and spice. If it's something that's a classic sort of pan sear with your pepper, with your salt, not much else, you might want to go a little lighter. It's interesting how well heavy flavor pairs with light flavor. And I like to reference cigars where a lighter whiskey, like a farm stock, pairs beautifully with a super heavy cigar because you can really see those differences, much like we can here. You know, the drastic differences aren't so drastic if I'm just tasting blend three or just smoking, you know, my certain Romeo and Julieta. But if I'm sipping this farm stock with it, it brings out other notes, much like a food pairing would, you know. So I'd recommend, yeah, mess around. Not everybody's going to like the same thing. You might like a sweeter whiskey with a sweeter dish, or you might want to turn it on its head. By the way, Jay Dockery on, Jay Dockery on YouTube said, I did something like this live with Dave Pickerel a few years ago using the different barrel finishes to blend. I have a bottle autographed by Dave. Would love to try this, which I just used as an excuse to raise another toast. Now that we're all on here to Dave Pickerel. And uh, how about Cheers. that? There we Absolutely. go. He was an icon for sure. And we're just waiting on the results of the vote. And All right. I have a quick oh, question. Wait. Rex, yeah. go. go ahead. Uh, and, and I apologize if you already went through this, but uh, on the Whistlepig side of things, as you guys were going through the blends, is there a certain, like, is there a, a priority list of things that you're looking for in the blends? Do you prioritize nose or mouthfeel or smoothness, or is there a certain kind of of uh, grain that you really like to have prominent in your whiskeys? Like, what were your criteria when choosing the three that we're voting on right now? So, if it was any other whiskey, your line of thinking would be spot on. With this, I can't overemphasize that crowd blending aspect where step one is where's the data, you know? I love data, it's fantastic for me. Where are these blends hitting? These blends are basically the three most submitted within a range of about 5%. Yeah, the actual well. representation of what people are loving here. Good, good. Exactly. So then we took that and said, okay, maybe the barley needs to be tweaked a little bit. Maybe, you know, this 11.5% is going to be hard for people at home to achieve with just this pipette for now. So we'll tweak it down a little bit. We fine-tuned it because we have the ability to, again, we have a little bit more than just 50 mils. We have a little bit more than just the pipettes we can spend a little bit more time and kind of perfect that. So it starts with you guys, comes to us, quite literally, the three most populated sort of areas of the blends. And it has to taste good as well. You know, we trust your guys' palates, but every now and then somebody says, hey, taste this. And I'm like, oh, it's great, you know? But it starts with you guys, <laughs> comes back to us. And now it goes back to you guys with that final decision. So, All right. you know. So this is coming from the guy that just suggested the cream soda. We'll see. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I my soul there, man. I'm to take the hat off. <laughs> oh, oh, we, oh, are we getting there yet? Is it time? Exciting moment here. Is it time for the grand review? I think it's time. So first thing, so, wait, does anybody have any sunglasses I, I can need borrow? You, he needs sunglasses to shield his eyes from the raw glory. That's about to happen. Oh, Bono's back. Oh, I'm oh, going full Bono right now. Full okay. Bono. So, so, hold on. Hold on. Oh, make it good. Oh, I can't even look. It's even worse. <laughs> person. Oh. <laughs> that is a skullet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's the real deal. That is straight up skullet. You want to get in there? No, not even close. <laughs> you want to get in there? You want to tuck in? No, I'm good. I'm good. You want to nuzzle it? I'm <laughs> so not I was good. honestly half expecting like a nest of baby birds up there or something. You know, <laughs> yeah. all the alert. That's that you face too. Looking good. So, um, is everyone seeing Young Frankenstein because that <laughs> 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 was the monster right there. I've gotten a lot of Benjamin Franklin. I've gotten a lot of Axe Murderer. There's, yeah, yeah. There's a menage <laughs> of really. I see awesome. you in my nightmares tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Peter, I'm going to start with you. Give me your guess. 
which which blend I won't we won't do the percentages, but which blend finished first, which blend finished second, which one finished third? Oh, Dan, it's hard to say because I've got some privileged information insofar as I know right. exactly what everybody has submitted. Chat. But that being said, I mean, you know, I should have at least a little bit of input. Okay. No comment. That's my input. <laughs> Chad, what, what do you think? What do you think uh, was the top vote getter? Well, I don't know what got the most votes, but my vote goes to C or three or however we're we're. I getting, agree. Naming I, these. I'm I your second favorite. Second favorite? I think it goes CBA, personally. Or three two one. Three two one. Three two one. Okay. All right. C Sorry. I was gonna say C A B. I agree with that. I like them all, but that's the that's the order I would put them into. And if I had to predict, I would guess that three got the vote. Because we said something? No, oh. because I just think it wasn't the most balanced. Rex, I, you I just all around was. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, for me, it's, uh, I like number three. I like how it feels like it's, I think a lot of us have already said it, it's very balanced. It's got a lot of things going on. Um, and for the second place, it was a really, it was a, it was a toss up between one and two. And I finally went with one because it feels just a little bit more of like a citrus note that I like. Uh, I, I very often gravitate towards dark fruits. But I, for whatever reason, the, cit the citrus notes grabbing me in number one. So for me, it's C A B. I'm gonna go with Chad and Sarah. I think it's gonna be C B A. Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If only I had a drum roll. Thad, do we have a drum roll? There it is. I hear it. <laughs> the number three. Number three. <laughs> With 16.2% of the vote. What? Is blend nah. number one. There you oh, go. Number one. Number one. I'm number one. I was like, wait, what? Third. <laughs> what All right. Oh. At, so that leaves, that leaves number three and number two going for the winner. And it was close. It was within five points. It was within five points. Uh, with the number one coming in, with 44% of the vote, the winner is blend number three there yeah. it is there it so it was yeah, like, yeah 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 two one was the way it went need to be right 39.7 percent of the vote uh mm -hmm. blend three got 44 percent of the vote nail biter that's yeah that's it's a good one yeah that's a good there one you go. the people so wait so wait what you're saying is is we predicted the correct order <laughs> what hold <laughs> it there's no one hold it you're yourself. saying we win yeah you yeah. hacked it I know your game, Chad. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> watch your YouTube channel. That's it right there. They know what they're talking about. They got it right. We'll, we'll take that endorsement. Can we have a to can we have a toast to this? I don't even. I'm, I'm just. I just. Yeah, I just agree. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to share a quick fun fact that's going to shock and awe everybody. The vast, almost majority, close to half the submissions were very close to, guess which blend? Blend number one. So close to half of all submissions were within, obviously within a range, and all blends are different. Even 5% obviously is going to change, but very, very close to 50% were for blend number one. So it just goes to show how much conversation, how much tasting it against each other, how much really thinking about it, having a second, third time around really gives you a better idea. And I think we've really kind of come to the best conclusion here. Some of the comments we're getting on Facebook, the most rounded, the most complex, the most balanced, it's got the most going on. It's also the most challenging for that reason, but we know our Flavia audience, we know our Whistlepig audience, we know that we love flavor, and that's what we're looking for. So I'm glad, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm enthused. I'm pumped that we chose this one, honestly. And I can't wait till it actually gets in a bottle. Yeah, yeah, I think it turned out really well. Yeah, me too. Well, with that, I guess I, I want to... Uh, um, with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us at home and, and everybody that took part in this and send in your comments and all of that. Peter, Peter, any final comments? I was going to say again, Dan, hair looks great. Stop worrying about it so much, you know, just uh, keep on applying that same exact amount of gel and you're good to go. 
I want to uh, I want to thank Chad and Sarah Perkins Urban Night. Thank you guys for being part of this for this. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Where, where can everybody find you on the on the YouTube channel? Where can they find you on social media? I have to stand up. Uh, it's YouTube.com slash Urban Night. What's that? It's YouTube.com slash Urban Night. Okay, fantastic. Um, and then also, uh, Daniel Whittington and Rex Kim of the Whiskey Tribe. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We had a good time. Yeah. And, and thanks yeah. for me specifically to all three of you, seriously, for tuning in. I mean, to Flaviar as well, to everybody that participated. I'm super pumped when I get people like you guys on. Dan, I know we got a little rapport, but this is the first time that I've spent time with the Knights and with Tribe. And it's just so fantastic to actually, you know, how far away are we right now, technically, but realistically, right in front of me. So mm -hmm. thanks for tuning in, guys. Seriously, thanks for being a part of this. And to Cheers everybody to at home, I hope you're all hanging in there. Stay strong uh, and you know, drink your whiskey in moderation. And thanks for spending this out with us. It was great. Cheers. Cheers.